Hey folks, it's us, podcasting wonderkins John Bishop and Lucas Southworth. Although this is a podcast about cars, it is not age-appropriate for the target demographic of these films, as we usually end up talking about the reproductive organs of Lightning McQueen. Alright, now let's take a look under the hood. Welcome to the Kachat, <laughs> the only yes. podcast brave enough to ask the question, what, hey. what is that? Hey. hey, yeah, what is up with cars? Because I do like to say our little catchphrase, but man, if I'm lying, I'm crying, you know? If I'm lying, I'm crying. I don't know what that means, but but yeah. Yeah, Any, I, I'm Lucas, he's John. We didn't say that. We usually do. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> good, Good energy. If you're wondering what this energy is from, it is the AM right now, which is not a time we record, which shouldn't offset us this much, but you know, who knows? Especially considering the AM that it is, is 11.53 AM. They didn't need to know that. (laughs) Hey, Uh, man. If we're lying or crying. Yeah, if if I'm lying, I'm crying, you know? Folks, if you don't know why we keep saying that, reasonable. I mean, yeah. Honestly, good. We did, in fact, watch Mater's Tall Tales. We finally got to it, folks. And that is what Mater says before all of them in varying tones, reminiscent of the theme of the episode. So, right. so yeah. So if he's lying, he's crying. Why didn't he cry? John, because he's not lying. Wait a minute. So those stories, those stories weren't lies? These tall tales weren't lies? I don't think these tales were that tall, John. If you don't know what Mater's Tall Tales are, reasonable also, again, they're a series of <laughs> shorts from the Cars first in which Mater is like, you know, I was an astronaut once. And Lightning was like, what? No, you weren't. And then he says, yep, it went like this. Me and Tia were there for a second. And Lightning's like, oh, what happened? How did you get out of this jam? And he says, well, shoot, you ought to know you was there. And then Lightning was there. He goes, what? And then he's in the memory then you're like, well, this is a story Mater's made up. But then at the end, it's always proven to be true. I think I did a pretty bad job explaining that. Do you feel similarly? I mean, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If what you were trying to accomplish is to describe the exact plot of every single episode, you have succeeded. Okay. Well, cool. <sighs> so Lightning McQueen almost dies a thousand times. And I think, honestly, that that explains why he doesn't remember any of these events. But I've got another theory I would like to share a little bit later about Mater the Greater. Yeah, no, I think think there's maybe a connection right there in M the Great. But, yeah, Lightning super doesn't remember being in any of these, but Mater does. Uh, Okay, okay, yep. Sorry, I'm stressed about this one already. (laughs) All right. Let's let's pick one to start with. Which one do you think is interesting but tame enough to just dip our dip our toe mater into? There you go. Uh, let's see. I mean, heavy metal mater wasn't that wasn't that impressive, I guess. True. <laughs> just and this is going to be a thing that hopefully won't bother anyone, but they said dad gum. <sighs> yeah, that's yeah. That's not it, right? I always assumed it was dagum with no with no extra d in there, but yeah, it's they either, certainly said it's either dagum like d a like dash gum or it's dat. And that's if you're like really really mad. And it's like dat gum it or blame it, and I don't know why you would say dat blame it, but you say that not dad gum. So, again, as with all of these, I feel like we should assume nobody has watched any of these, which, again, so reasonable, so reasonable, don't even worry about it. Very, very acceptable. 
we did not establish that it was homework. And even if we did, you shouldn't do it. You should not do homework yeah. assigned to you by the two of us. <laughs> Certainly not. But the, the story of Heavy Metal Mater is like, I think Guido was singing karaoke and Lightning was like, hey, Mater, you should get up and do it. And he was like, I don't want to overshadow him because I was a famous rock star once. And th he was. And his songs, literally, the only lyric to them is Dagum. He he yep. starts as like a, a sort of, I don't know, sort of like a bluegrassy band mm -hmm. uh, in which his songs sort of go like Dagum, 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 Dagum. And they're playing sort of music to it. But then, now, how do you how do you transition from being like bluegrassy folksy to being heavy metal? John, I literally don't remember. <laughs> I remember the the pun that they 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 make to to like <laughs> name the genre, but I think they just like some stuff. No, it was, okay, it was yeah, a fly. A fly uh, yeah, yeah, it was a fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so in the middle of a recording session that was spurred on by someone asking hey, do you have an album? So so that's that's how easy it is. Just if you want to be a rock star, just get an album, I guess. Uh, there's a fly in the room, and the drummer decides to, instead of using his forklift hands to, like, <laughs> with a much larger surface area, to smack or grab or anything about the fly, he uses his drumsticks to assault his drums until he discovers a new genre of music, which yes. I, why? Your hands are much bigger than your sticks. Why are you doing this? And also, are you not concerned for your drums? You're just hitting them like a madman. Yeah, dr drums ain't cheap. And like, he does it and the rest of the band is like, oh, what's going on here? And they sort of like start playing heavy metal-y, and made her start screaming Dagum instead of just sort of singing it jovially. Removing the heart from the band. Honestly, I... <laughs> Neither song was good. Obviously, the only lyric was Dagum. But I enjoyed listening to the little bluegrass Dagum more than the other one. Yeah. Gosh, what am I talking about? Uh... <laughs> Normally, I'm not a bluegrass type of guy, but it, it had a heart to it that was lacking in the made her screaming <laughs> it certainly did uh and then someone's like what do you gotta call this and Mater's like uh and then a delivery person comes in into the middle of the recording session <laughs> yes he says uh Mater, i got all this heavy metal for you and it's just like a hunk of metal with like one ton on it or something <laughs> can't be a ton that's two thousand pounds but still it's it's heavier than the forklift carrying it <laughs> Yeah, certainly. So the, then he's just a heavy metal artist, and he plays a, pia a giant ground piano, sort of like from the movie Big. Uh, but yeah, and of course Lightning's there, and his, his like backup artist. Yeah, but I, I will clarify. They did, in fact, have the scene play out as, where do you want me to put this heavy metal meter? Because someone asked, yeah. hey, what yeah. are you going to name the band? And then immediately, where do you want me to put this heavy metal mater? Which is, I guess, the name of the entire band and not just the one artist, which is, I would say, cruel for all of the other members. But also, you have another person who's already famous, Lightning McQueen. It's Lightning McQueen's in the band. <laughs> yeah. Is just going to call it a heavy metal mater? Okay, okay. Yeah, and, and the proof that this one happened is also... Not the, it's just there was a giant like bat mater <laughs> balloon that floated by that was from the concert. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know, man. I don't know. That one was. That I one's... feel like that one doesn't have too heavily like too heavy implications on anything. It's just like a weird one. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and issue us a challenge. Every episode sure. we have to think of, well, why does why does lightning not remember this one? And I'm going to have okay, to guess sure. it's from the just this absurd amount of explosions. One of them probably concussed him a little bit. That and all the crazy music. There's also probably some aspect of like recreational drug use associated with being in a heavy metal band. Sure. 
So wild and crazy drugs and explosions. Sure. I'm going to, my, my theory is this was the most forgettable short for me. <laughs> so maybe lightning was just like, Oh, this is kind of a boring one. I don't, uh, I guess I remember that happening. It's not that important to my life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what is our next uh, tall tale? Uh, let's do one with what I think are a few other implications in it. I want to get into Rescue Squad, Mater. Okay, let's let's go for that. Uh, what's what's special about Rescue Squad, Mater? Well, of course, in this one, uh, Mater is a firefighter who rescues lightning. And then later is also a doctor who operates on lightning. And that's like the story of the episode. But there are a few <laughs> details in this one that really, really like, they're very minor, but they're not because Mia and Tia are in all of the shorts, right? Oh, you're talking about the fact that they were dog people. Yes, I am in fact talking about the fact that Mia and Tia were at the very least dressed like Dalmatians, if not half Dalmatian. <laughs> Yep. So me and Tia are in all the shorts just sort of as like a we love Mater kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But they do appear, again, either dressed as Dalmatians, which is already pretty weird because how do they know what Dalmatians are? Mm-hmm. Or they are, they are in fact dog car people. It's unclear. Now, did they say Bow Wow? They did in fact say Bow Wow. Okay, so that answers all of my questions. Even if they're not dogs, they shouldn't know what dogs are, John. Very true, but bow wow. John, they know what dogs are, and they know that Dalmatians specifically are firefighting themed. Mm -hmm. And And they are them. These tween girls are just dogs for some reason. Maybe Mater's just like a freak, you know? (laughs) So That's what he's into. I will say that the evidence at the end of this episode is some of the more loose evidence you will be given. Do you remember yeah. what it was? Just the hot lady doctor car comes and says, hello, doctor. And then Mater like chases after her like he's going to like go have sex with her or something. Mm-hmm. Because he's got his, his MD, his PhD, and his CTE, which is... His very attractive car friend, I guess, who for some reason is in the operating room, but isn't a doctor. John, I do need to point out something that is the other big thing that bothered me in this episode. You missed one of the abbreviations in there. Do you remember which abbreviation you missed in there? I I was looking for it and I could not remember what it was. John, he did also have his TP. Oh, his CTP? Yes, which was TP toilet paper with C on it. It had a C on it, which like one, a pretty bad pun. <laughs> Two, much more importantly, oh God, do they use toilet paper? <laughs> oh no, why? Oh, why? Clearly they oh. don't use toilet paper because that would be terrible. But also, <laughs> why would it be in the exists. operating room? And, and also, why would you have it embroidered? Oh, John, the cars have to wipe something. Well, why would they have to wipe, Lucas? What would they have to wipe? What? Where would they have to wipe, Lucas? Oh, John, the cars poop. The cars poop, John. All right. We have seen toilets. We know this is true. I'm pretty sure we've seen, like, a car driving out of a bathroom. Probably Mater. With, like, a little bit of toilet paper attached to his tire or something. That's probably true. He does go to the bathroom in the airport in Cars 2, and there's a bidet. Oh, so the bidet has to clean something, too. Oh, God. And do you remember what that bidet cleans? The entire bottom. The entire bottom. (laughs) So they kind of just ooze it out of their entire lower half. And Mater is very surprised and shocked by the bidet, meaning that he's used to toilet paper, I guess. So he just, they just uh, wipe their entire... Counteroffer. Maybe he's not used to toilet paper. Maybe he just doesn't wipe. 
Uh, I thought you were going to make it better, but you made it worse. I don't want to talk about car poop anymore. So we're just going to say, yes, they poop. Toilet paper's involved somehow. Now, Lucas, what if what if it's not rust? What if it's just I refuse, poop? John, I literally refuse to talk about that with you. Uh, Mater is a doctor. A he has doctor. a doctorate. Sorry. <laughs> yep. He is a doctorate. He's got a medical doctorate and a philosophy yeah. That's what a PhD is, right? A doctorate in the philosophy uh, of a subject. Yeah, a, a doctorate in something usually just not medical based. Uh Yeah. But like we up uh, to okay, we I do remember in our Law and Order episode you said did Mater go to school and we were like unless <laughs> unless Mater's tall tales tell us, us differently. So Mater does have multiple advanced degrees. Yep. Man, this sucks. All right, so let's talk about this whole whole scenario. He is yes. not a tow truck in this one until he's a doctor. He, yes. When he is, yes. uh-huh. uh, when he's fighting the fire, he is in fact a fire truck. That was the beginning yes. of the tall tale. Is they pass a fire truck, and good old racist Mater is like, you know, I was a fire truck because sure you were, and then he was. Why not? His body was yeah, just was, a different truck's body, yes. and he fought fire. Lightning McQueen almost died in a fire, which we do. The we trauma... do have an easy way to explain him forgetting this time. Yeah, either the trauma or the like overheating and needing a doctor who was in fact Mater. There's a lot there that could just have caused him to not remember it. And then the sheer horror of the fact that those those girls were dogs. They were dog people. I do need to say they weren't dog people. They were dog car people, which is worse. <laughs> they were dog uh, car people. And also, I must ask the question, are Tia and Mia furries? Well, we always knew we were going to get here from episode one. You know, we were always, we always knew ask. we were going to be the only ones brave enough to ask the question. Are these teenage girls furries? Again, I must stipulate these teenage car girls. Are they furries? <laughs> And somehow know what dogs are. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, yes, sure. They're yeah. They're also nurses because I, I they will, also assist him. I will clarify that I have learned within the past like year that there is in fact a difference between a furry and a yiffer. Then again, I could uh, be we, entirely we, wrong, and everything could be different because who knows? First off. I don't even know much about this in the real world, let alone the car yes. world. Obviously, I don't care if you're a furry. You do what you want. Uh, and you're, you're absolutely correct. Furries are not in explicitly sexual every time. Uh, but me and Tia are maybe furries. So yep. that's something. That's something we've said and will be recorded and can be played by anyone, huh? But uh, but again, and this, this is hopefully the last time, uh, they are... Yeah. They are teenage furry car girls. Yes, or literally, or we haven't ruled out the fact that they are just also just car. They, they are dogs. Yep. Like, they're not dressed like dogs. They could just be dogs. It's they very could unclear. just be dogs. You think, Bow wow. you think they would want to make it very clear if they were dog people or people dressed like dogs. Sorry, dog cars or cars dressed like dogs. <laughs> But uh, no reprise they didn't. for they you certainly didn't. or for us. This is in fact the Kachat. It is, in fact, we can't. I can't talk about this one anymore. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna move on. All right, but well, we will say uh, again. So there's a fire. He puts it out. Lightning was in the fire for some reason, just on like the second or third floor, which that raises questions. Uh, he jumps out. Oh, I guess is saved, I guess, by the now different type of truck mater, uh, immediately sent to the hospital, and then immediately uh, mater is his doctor and is also not a fire truck anymore. So that happened extremely fast. And also it the does. dog people are no longer dog people, I think. They're nurse people. Yeah, they're they're some sort of medical 
professionals assisting Mater. Uh, I will say, even it, when he's when Lightning's being transported through the hospital, he does the person does hit him face first into all of the doors. Every single so even, door. <laughs> yes. So even if we don't go with he was in a fire and operated on by Mater. That could also there explain is, his memory. There's loss. the concussion of being rammed yes. into a bunch of doors. Yes. All right. Let's move on to another tall tale. All yeah. Right. You want me to keep picking them? Yeah. Go for it. Sure. Uh, El Mater door. El Mater door. All right. So if you haven't gathered from the title El Mater door, Mater is a matador. He is. That's it. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Th- this one. This one, much like whatever the first one was, I don't think has too many like heavy implications in it. Mayor just fights like a bulldozer, and then he like beats the bulldozer, and then oh no, there are three bulldozers, <laughs> and then he beats them, and then oh no, there are ten bulldozers and lightnings here. And and, and how is them. it that Mater gets out of this one? Don't they just chase lightning because yep. he's red? He's red. He's a shinier, <laughs> redder version of himself. And then the reason Lightning doesn't remember is because he's concussed from the dozen he's... animals that just nearly destroy his entire body. He is beaten senseless by giant construction equipment with the minds of beasts. And what's the evidence for this one? I think Mia and Tia just show up and they're like, El Matador! No, that, uh, they say that like... in, in the story. The evidence for this one is... Lightning gets assaulted again by more of these beasts. I think Mia and Tia show up again, though, because I have written down in my notes just Mater grabs Mia slash Tia's. Yep. Uh, yeah, he he hooks onto one of their, their, their chasses, if you will, and he drags them yeah. over to him in a, in a gross gesture that is just so, so bad. Uh, yeah, just because those were probably bleeped. The word was but. <laughs> not anything worse than that, but still not great. <laughs> Are we going to censor chasses? Maybe. I don't know. No, why would we? Uh, but Mater does grab their butt. Yep. They're into it. They're they're clearly a fan of El Matador. But, like, even if you're into it, that is a hook that is going into your butt. Yeah, and she does react like, you know, when people react to their butt being grabbed. It was like a, she does a little oh. Oh. But not how you would react if that hand touching your butt was a a, was a jagged metal hook. Well, maybe how you would react if it was a jagged metal hook and your butt was also made of metal. Maybe. Because <laughs> can say? normally it's flesh on flesh. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, the only other two notes I wrote down is priest and altar boy. There's a very explicit, like, Catholic priest who shows up for a second. Yeah, there is, like, a Hail Mary type thing where, oh, Mater's about to die. Let's pray for his soul, which is going to be lost. So that's something, more evidence for religion back a while ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only other note I have is Mater has a 10-foot vertical leap. (laughs) because he certainly does he does and it's not it's not from a run he just standing position is encircled by these beasts and he just jumps 10 feet into the air from standing yeah again i don't know that that one has too many implications but like i don't know i feel like it's important you the audience know that mater has a 10 foot vertical leap but uh, let's talk about a different tall tale in which we can explore how tall his vertical leap is when he's got any amount of, like, leeway with it. And let's talk about the other way where he is a luchador mater. Oh, yes, of course, monster truck mater. <laughs> yeah. So when he is a monster truck, he starts off by just being a truck. Eventually, he becomes well-known and gets giant tires. Yes. And he is a monster truck at that point who fights actual monster trucks that are much bigger. And and this one ends with Mater fighting 
a monster monster truck. Yeah, like like a a tragedy of science. <laughs> like just a beast that didn't ask to be made is very clearly what this thing is. And how how kindly would you say this creature, this poor unfortunate soul, is treated by Mater? Very unkindly. I. How did he take care of him? I actually. What did he do? Well, Lucas, he, he flattened him like, entirely. Yeah, he flips the the the, the ring on him, doesn't he? Yep. Like the entire wrestling ring on him somehow. And and how does he do that? And also, is that why Lightning doesn't remember it? Fully, fully, Lightning is a wrestler, and wrestlers have lots of issues with repeated head injuries. So, again, this one is a bit more sadly easy. But uh, at the same time, I do want to point out that the way that Mater wins this one is by, again, sacrificing Lightning McQueen, fully, leaving him yes. in the ring with this monster, and then not just leaving him alone... He doesn't just leave Lightning be. No, he flips the entire ring, which ends up having Lightning McQueen crushed underneath the weight of not only the ring, but also the monster on top of him. Yeah. Yeah, so this one... Man, Lightning has experienced a lot of drama. <laughs> a lot of physical and emotional trauma. The the sheer weight is physical, and the emotional weight of the betrayal of your friend. <sighs> yeah, and again, seeing these dog, car, maybe human hybrids, this Frankenstein, I think it's literally like a play on Frankenstein's monster. That, it reminds me actually of, uh, it reminds me of a couple of characters from Vampires, <laughs> is what it, it's, it's like, Alucard. A, a little bit of, yeah, it, it's, it's Alucard, if you, you know, you remember the minor character we mentioned several episodes from a show you didn't watch. Of course you yeah. remember him. He was the one that you were supposed to look out for for the entire show, and he was in half of an episode. Uh, but anyway, Mater fights super dirty in every single match he's in, also. Yeah, in one of the earlier ones, he dresses as a child and manipulates the emotions of an ice cream truck. And then just betrays the ice cream truck. Doesn't even seem yeah. to care about the ice cream. There is one called the Rastakarian that I feel like we have to mention legally. See, I don't I don't know if I feel comfortable saying anything about the Rastakarian. Because what could we say I, about I don't the feel comfortable <laughs> that someone at Disney Pixar decided, let's make a car and call it the Rastakarian and give it huge dreads and a stereotypical hat and a stereotypical accent and a catchphrase and put, I don't remember the catchphrase well well the thing is then as soon as he is defeated Mater does appropriate it so there is that yeah Mater wears his I guess wig or maybe just his scalped hair yeah he, he uh, scalps the man and then has the audience cheering the man's like catchphrase at his demise so that's kind of a thing that they did, huh? Yep. 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 <laughs> oh, boy. All I want to talk about with that one, I think, maybe... Oh, uh, only other thing. M Mia and Tia, when they're in this one, they're like, Ooh, look at your wheels, Mater. And Mater says, Oh, they're real. Which? So, like... Great. Great. They're... <laughs> they're his muscles? Because, like, I don't see a way to make that... <laughs> There's his, sexual. There's arms and I don't legs, see the way to make. And there. Yes. So there is muscles. Not I guess. surgically enhanced arms and legs. Which like is that a thing? The, Do people get like Botox? But also, in their they arms factually are. They are. They fully are. <laughs> They're not as. It's. They the are manufactured. Wait. <laughs> so those aren't real, Mater. So why didn't he cry? Huh? If he's lying, he's crying, and he did not cry. Okay, if we're assuming that what he said is true, then his wheels got bigger as if they were muscles and he got stronger, which I'm not willing to touch. <laughs> At least not today. Uh, yeah. All right, so so all of that is a thing. By the way, Frankenstein in this scenario is the uh, German scientist from Cars 2. Just want to throw that out there. 
and the evidence, someone wants an autograph from him, and then, and I, I cannot make this up, Mater gives the autograph by just, like, leaving a tire mark on this person's body? Yeah. And then... Yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. <laughs> also extremely famous, Lightning McQueen, Frightening McMean, uh, is ignored by the person who wants the autograph, and then asks the man, do you want Frightening McMean's autograph? To which the man just leaves and is then chased by this extremely famous car while he desperately tries to give the man his autograph. Which, again, the autograph is just, like, smearing your hand gunk on someone's face. Huh, yeah. That'd be an interesting way to give autographs. Uh, alright, so let's get a little bit, let's get a little bit diverted. You you had your sure. your least memorable I'm going to go for my least memorable, and that is Tokyo Mater. Yeah, you literally didn't remember this one when we talked about when we went through them before we recorded. Uh, Mater's Tall Tales, Towing in Tokyo. Um, How do you, the the Japan weeaboo boy, not remember the one set in Tokyo? Uh, I want to say I'm not a weeaboo, but if, like, that's the, that's the motto on, of the weeaboo. So if I'm lying, I'm crying. <laughs> Hey man, if you're lying, you're crying. Uh, all right. So, so what happens in this one? Because what I remember is that like lightning is racing, I guess, and then there's just ninja, and then Mater takes care of the ninja. No, it's well. I'm just, I'm just gonna. So there are some randos drifting through Radiator Springs, and Sheriff goes, "Not in my town." And then Mater's like, oh, "I, I drifted once." Uh, and uh, it shows him towing a Japanese car, and he says, I'll go as far as you need. And the guy's like, okay. And then it cuts to Japan with Mater driving out of the ocean uh, with the car in tow. <laughs> okay. Uh, and said, man, I gotta, ch- I gotta change my motto. <laughs> so, like, maybe they don't have to breathe. There's some actually some more evidence for that later, but we'll, I'll get into that. So he does drive the entire length of the ocean underwater with a car in tow. (laughs) Then he's in Tokyo. uh, uh, He like insults someone or something and it's like a drift, a drift boy. Uh, So, so he's like, I challenge you to a drift race. Uh, And then he, he gets all outfitted with drift gear uh, and they he race through drift Tokyo. <laughs> yes, oh, that, that's solid. Good joke. Uh, Pacific Rim is an underrated movie. Uh, <laughs> Lightning. When Lightning does show up, it's right after the ninja show up to mess with um, Mater driving. Lightning does fully teleport in. That's very important. How do I not remember this one? <laughs> I don't know, John. (laughs) Lightning does fully teleport in like an anime character and then does like an anime like super move to defeat the ninjas. (laughs) And Mater wins the race and humiliates this drift guy. Uh, And his punishment is to have all of his modifications stripped from him. Uh, (laughs) Okay. So his, his shaming is to like have body parts removed? To become a norm, to to be to have all his body augmentations removed, okay. he becomes a normal car again. That is less terrifying. Oh, so boy. yeah, that's what happens in that one. All right. Uh, mm. All right. So oh, so there's teleportation in that one for some reason. Yes, lightning again has full anime powers. <laughs> he teleports in, does like. And I don't remember what his super move is, but he defeats all the ninjas with, like, anime powers. I do... J- Japanese cars do have chibi eyes. <laughs> Several of them do, at least. Not all of them, I don't think, but... Or... Uh, there insensitive is... Insensitive narrator. F- fully. That That's fair. Only other, like, big thing before we start talking about the individual things... No, two, actually. Uh, the, he gets chased by a police car at one point. He goes through a donut shop. But the donut shop is just a bunch of cops doing donuts. They're just, they're just so doing that's what, donuts? Yeah, around the shop, in the shop. And he says, oh, I love donuts, and starts doing donuts. Uh, 
Okay. And there's a very short cameo from Mike and Sully cars in it. Lucas, how do I not remember this one? Uh, John, again, I feel like Heavy Metal Mater was very justified in me not remembering it very well. But like, (laughs) a lot of stuff happens in this one, man. I don't understand. I will say what I just said is a good lead into the question from Liz. So we can do that real quick and then... Let's let's go ahead with that one. Yeah, uh, we're both... Both of our significant others are named Elizabeth. They ask us questions. That's the entire joke. Uh, This one is... So in Cars 1, there's a scene in the credits with Mac watching a bunch of uh, Pixar films being carified. They are fully like movies. Mike and Sully appear in that. But also, Mike and Sully appear in real life. Again, for a fraction of a second, but it's very definitely them. So, like, I don't know. What's going on there? Are they people cosplaying as Mike and Sully? Are they, uh, just, are are Mike and Sully real? They're almost certainly just Mike and Sully. And I feel like this is one of those things where the, like, weird multiverse of it is that, okay, so Mike and Sully are monsters in another universe that has access to this universe. And for... The obvious reason of they're all cars, so I like they can just blend in. Being a monster in a world where everyone's cars, it's pretty easy to just be a monster and everything be fine. And I, I, I will specify. I don't know if I said this. They are their car versions in the cameo. They're not just Mike yeah. and Sully. So yeah, I, and I mean, I think the the biggest thing is that Mike Wazowski car still Mike Karzowski. There we go. <laughs> Uh, still only has a single eye, so like, yeah. So that's just... So I don't think you could cosplay as that super easily. So that's just as upsetting. Okay, so... Yeah. Lucas, I'm looking at this video. I have to imagine that I just missed this one somehow, because... I will say it's it's the last one on the DVD. But like, holy cow. Lightning McQueen yeah, is just... Yeah, it's a lot. He's just riding at this point. He... He is a being of yeah, that's a good... magical electrical powers, almost as if his name, yeah. Lightning, is his source of power. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I am not exaggerating when I say he has full like video game or anime like superpowers in this he one. He teleports, but it's not so... that he's teleported in. He is a bolt of lightning incarnate that yeah. hits the ground beside Mater. And then all of a sudden, like, another bolt of lightning grants him his full set of powers and tattoos him with a lightning bolt dragon pattern. And boy, howdy. It's so good. Yeah. And I will say, if I remember right, this one has the weakest evidence at the very end. Like, I think it's just made her... I don't even remember. I think it, like, wasn't very good. Like, it wasn't proof at all. For some reason, like the others are all proof, this one just didn't have that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this real so, quick because it, it looks just like okay. The evidence is Mater then drifts very badly. <laughs> Someone yeah, throws so, some wood on him to modify him, and then he scrapes his body against the ground to cause sparks. That's not even like a little bit of evidence. That's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm almost willing to say that he's crying on this one. I would hope <laughs> so, because again, proof. lightning just for a brief period <laughs> of time would have been a god of lightning. Yeah. And if you forget that, I I feel so bad for you. How do you lose your god powers and forget it? That's, that's crazy. I mean, it could, if we want to say this one is canon, which I'm not super willing to do, but playing devil's advocate i guess it could be like i don't know like a thor like situation except instead of just stripping him of the powers he also stripped him of his memory of being a god he's he's no longer worthy of being the god of lightning (laughs) yeah lightning is thor so that's something uh but yeah i'm I'm pretty willing to say this one didn't happen lightning this one didn't happen i'm comfortable with this one didn't happen because there's too much okay. there to unpack. All right. Let's... And I, I'm 
I, I, and I'm going to say we're not doing it because it's so unrealistic. It's because we are saying all the other ones happened because there's definitive proof at the end of the short. But this one doesn't have that. At, at least we're not they being had lazy. some amount of evidence. Whereas this one, it's got nothing. It's got nothing. If anything, it's he's bad at drifting, so it's a- anti. The, the hinting proof is that it didn't happen in the wrong direction. All right, let's go for another yeah. one. Right, let's go for another one. We could just briefly uh... skim over the uh, the one where he's in space. We could hit some major points of uh, okay. So they both re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Should have burned to death, but didn't hit the water before well, one of them hits the water before the parachute deploys so that's the brain trauma that made lightning forget that one very yeah <laughs> uh they uh, both go so fast do you remember the number the number yeah of how fast they were going yeah no fully not okay because lightning was all indignant about you can't go that fast you're not even a race car and then well, you was there going even faster, and all of a sudden, lightning just rockets past. Not even accomplishing anything on the mission. He's just sort of there. He's just in space. And to really drive that he wasn't useful on this mission, and just to like solidify that all this happened, the same rocket that put Mater in space, whose catchphrase is, let's burn this candle, which... Very, very sad when you think about what that means. He shows up and picks up just Mater, because why would he pick up Lightning? Because Lightning didn't do anything. <sighs> and I, I, John, you know how we always do corrections, but we don't really? Mm-hmm. I, have a, I have a correction, actually, from uh, Final Frontier. Let's do it. Uh, where we talk about this short a lot. I said that they were wearing helmets, so they had to breathe. They are wearing helmets, but they're only covering their eyes. They don't cover their mouths. <laughs> they have helmets for <laughs> their eyes. other Otherwise known yes. as goggles. <laughs> but they yes. are dome helmets. So, yes. <laughs> All right. So this one has a lot more like solid evidence. Definitely could consider that proof. And, yeah. and the Rocket Man. The Rocket Man's catchphrase is an allusion to the fact that rockets have single uses. And that's sad, but also inaccurate because this rocket man, he goes back and he's able to do it again somehow. And I mean, again, he, he he's a space shuttle. Space shuttles have multiple uses. They just like have the giant engines that like fall off of them. But yeah, it is kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah, we talk about this one a lot in Final Frontier. If you want more, go listen to that one. It's like two episodes ago. Who can say? All right. So that's space travel. And I think it's a good time for the, uh, (laughs) it's a good thing you cut out all of my weird yawns as it is the AM. Uh, Yeah. When we started. Of course. (laughs) Because it's not the AM. I definitely cut, I cut all of those. Yep. (laughs) They didn't hear them. Didn't hear any of them, so... I probably did cut several of them. <laughs> I hope so. I There's know, been, like, five sound. at least. They're probably bad to listen to. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's a good time for that that uh, that thing whose name I'm not going to say because I'm, I'm going to need you to say it because we've been emailed by number one fan, Faith. So give me, give me oh, that name. I've got it. Uh, we've got the... Uh, wiki quote of the day. <laughs> uh... Uh, again, John is correct. That was fan submit by number one fan fate. If you all don't submit them, it's only going to be her controlling what the name of the wiki quote of the day segment is, which honestly I'm fine with. But if you don't want her to be the sole decider, send us things. If if the power goes to her head, she may someday realize that she can make us say whatever she wants. Oh, she's our, she made me scream, so... Uh, <laughs> it was, I just want Lucas to scream. Yep. Are you saying you have one? I have one prepared. Or did you just want me to do I it? I just wanted you to do it. I wanted I wanted okay. Faith to get that one. No, I was fully going to do that, okay, trust good. me. Uh, uh, this time we are heading over to disney.fandom.com slash wiki slash Mia underscore and underscore Tia. We don't go to to the Disney wiki very often. They're they're a bit more. They're a bit tame. Uh, judicious, yeah. But 
this one I noticed over in the sidebar here, they have character information and just a bunch of fun little categories that I want to get into. Uh, so this is again for Mia and Tia. We got other names, the twins, uh, alignment, good. Uh, we got uh, allies, each other, their hero, Lightning McQueen, the king, Mac, Mater, Sally Carrera, Flo, Fillmore, Sarge, Doc Hudson, Lizzie, Red, Ramon, Luigi, Guido, Chick Hicks, in parentheses, formerly. Uh, oh. And right below it, we've got enemies, Chick Hicks, checks out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then likes Lightning McQueen, Chick Hicks, in parentheses, formerly, and uh, Mater. Uh, then we've got Dislikes, which is maybe my favorite of them. Lightning McQueen disappearing. <laughs> and uh, Their hero dying. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, we've got Chick Hicks cheating. They don't like that either. Okay, And okay. then, not the last in the column, but the last I'll read is Fate become the biggest fans of Lightning McQueen, which is a very... They have a category Very weird for way fate. to word that. They do, yes. Okay. Okay. That's a choice. All right. Yeah, just kind of a weird... And Just kind of a weird thing that they've done. And did you say that, done. that their ally is the king? Yeah, he is listed as one of their allies here. Who's, who's the king? Oh, the, the king is the blue guy from the first one. Like, oh, it's okay. the three of them the in the final race. The guy whose nickname is the king, because he's wealthy enough to have the nickname. Yeah, he, he's like the, the old-time racer the who's like, it's his final race. Lightning. Yeah, lightning helps him across the finish line, yada, yada, yada. Oh, boy. So. So, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> kind of a thing For a done. second, I was just worried that there was a king over, like. That you just forgot about. Yeah, because in that case, the king would be the american king because because they are american Ooh, yeah wolf <laughs> yeah all right so that's very interesting yeah um let's let's go for another tall tale <laughs> yeah sure uh we just did the space one do you want to do the other space one sure let's do unidentified flying mater which has the most Gosh. concrete proof of any of them i would say yeah uh, and I, a lot of them have pretty concrete proof, but this one does. You, I agree with that. <laughs> so, so let's let's start with uh, what is the 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 premise? What gets Mater started on this tall tale? It's a hubcap. Uh, someone has a hubcap yes. fly uh, off. Thank you. And he says, "Oh, it's a UFO." And then Lightning's like, "No, clearly that's not a UFO." And he says. No, yeah, it is, because I've seen one before. And then he just talks about the time he saw a UFO person who happens to have his exact teeth. Which, a weird trend in at least two of them was just, oh, look, we're going to focus on Mater's teeth as a defining characteristic. But the UFO's name was Mator, because Mater yeah. asks, what's your yeah. name? And... He says, my name's Mater, and the guy says, my name's Mator, and I think he just says Mator. I think he just says Mator, and that's how he gets named, I guess. Also, this thing is probably a baby. Gotta point that out. It it, it, it acts, and when we, spoiler, see the giant mothership later, oh, literal mothership, mm -hmm. that's nice. Uh, they they, they could have made that, man, hire me, that was a... Fantastic joke. I Whatever. think they did uh, make that joke in the tale. Whatever. I don't remember it. I think someone uh, calls her mama. I think it was Mater. Do they use the word mothership? Uh, maybe. I don't know. It was something along the lines of, could you drop us off back at, on on Earth or our home or whatever? And then they get dropped off. But like, could you drop us off mama or something like that? It's very strange. Yeah, so... You said he saw a a flying saucer. He very much befriends. And he practically adopts the, a flying saucer. Yeah, and he does... The, the flying saucer does give him the ability to fly also. But that's not what he said. He didn't say gives him the ability. No, he said, I taught him how to drive backwards, and he taught me how yeah, to okay. fly. <laughs> and all it was was the thing flies... 
And then Mater's like, so I just... And then he, like, grunts unpleasantly and, like, his gears grind against each other until his tires begin glowing blue and he just starts flying. So I guess just all cars can do that? Which really leads me to believe that our space theory of there is some sort of nanovirus that has taken over the universe is probably accurate because that means that this virus existed within all of the cars which is why he's able to learn how to fly like a ufo can yeah this tall tale accidentally confirms one of our theories a little bit and i mean aliens exist (laughs) that's not nothing so our theory goes from being uh possible to being plausible i think i would i would go so far to call it probable nice all right so in this episode the the government it just kind of steals the child and is gonna cut him open, I guess. And uh, how does how does Mater solve this problem? He dresses like a German scientist and like <laughs> just sort of goes in and gets some. He, gets some... he goes in there, immediately removes his disguise, and just takes the kid. He doesn't wear it. Yeah, he doesn't wear it for very long. He puts it on, moves twenty feet, and takes it off. As if he could not have moved those 20 feet without the disguise. <sighs> and and how does how does Lightning figure into this one? He just... Well, Lightning doesn't get to fly, one. <laughs> He's just driving he does along in, a sense. in the desert with them. He gets flown by the mothership. He gets abducted by the mothership, but... <laughs> it's, he, he gets saved. Because, yes, again, sure. Mater's uh, master plan was disguise... Grab child without disguise and then just book it. And then they're just running, being pursued by this government organization. And then they're saved by the mothership who flies them all across the universe for a few seconds. And then just throws them back into Radiator Springs. Yeah, so I think we have a few avenues of how, why Lightning forgot. He does run into, like several cactuses while they're running from the government Mm -hmm. uh he gets dropped real hard by the mothership back in the radiator i wouldn't even say dropped it feels more like he was thrown (laughs) yeah (sighs) it's also possible i mean maybe this is too stereotypical of like an alien thing abduction who knows what they did to him on that ship yeah abduction they they clear your mind that's why so few people can recall any details so so that's that and Mater is gifted with the ability to remember it because he is like imprinted on the child, I guess. Yeah, and you talked about the proof being pretty solid in this one. He does just like he's like, "Watch, I'll fly right now," and then he starts like making that terrible noise again, and Lightning's like, "Oh, gross, Mater," <laughs> and drives leaves. away. Seconds before, <laughs> but the glow happens. Yeah, and he does just fly away. So, so it's yeah. confirmed that in in the least he can fly like a UFO could, which is so strange. But the good news is, John, he can also fly like a plane can fly. <sighs> <sighs> so, which is perfect transition into the next tall tale, Air Mater. Oh no! Why don't I remember Air Mater? I texted it to you. Oh, Johnny. Oh no! Uh, he does. If, if you don't, that's fine. I'll get into it a little bit. Okay. I'm excited to tell you that Mater does, in fact, tow... Oh, it's right I here. I think a plane... That's fine. He does, in fact, tow a plane to Propwash Junction. And he does, in fact, meet Skipper and Sparky. If you don't remember, Propwash Junction is the hometown of Dusty Croppopper and the other protagonists of Planes. So that's that. So I don't see Dottie yet. Am I about to? Oh, you don't, you're not going to see Dottie. You're only going to see Skipper and Sparky. Okay. They just, I'm going to, they just slap some wings and a rudder on him and he can fly. That's that's pretty par for the course. Okay. And he gets his hook caught on like, I think some electrical wires at some point. And now he's the world's best backwards flyer. Yes, he gets flung, he gets slingshotted back, he's flying backwards, and like an analog to like the Blue Angels, if you know them, uh, just like a 
stunt flying group are like, wow, let's get this guy. So he he does he does get him. <laughs> and he does his stunts and lightning's there. And he flies backwards, but all his plane stuff falls off, and he almost dies. But I think lightning saves him. He did just break both of his arms, like, while being introduced to the Blue Angels. So, like, that should give them some sort of hint that this is not exactly a good idea. Oh, and he's so pretty when he joins them. No, he does get a new paint job. He gets a new paint job in a lot of them, or it is just in his original blue paint job. Which... Uh, because it's implied it's in the past. Let's let's talk about something interesting that happens in a lot of them, if not all of them. But for some reason, they uh-huh. feel the need to like, oh, if you didn't know that this actually happened, here is how he lost this part. Because they, in like so many of them, show him being just like destroyed bit by bit. And it's like in permanent ways uh-huh. that are forever there now. Yeah, the one I remember specifically is in the film noir one that we still haven't talked about. His headlight gets pried out, and that's how he lost one of his headlights. Which, gosh, we gotta talk about that, but we'll get there. Man, this one's gotta be a little long, folks. That's okay. It's a very special episode. Okay. And the evidence is the Blue Angels just abduct him at the end. Yep. Uh, So, I guess if you slap any uh, wings on... It, and a rudder. All of them have... I don't think that's what it's called on a plane. A propeller? The thing in the back. Nope. The thing in the back that helps them steer. Uh, maybe called a rudder for a plane. I don't know. I think that's a rudder. Uh, if you slap those on a car, they can fly. So, cool. Great. How fun. <laughs> yep. But also, we'll point out, they didn't use any of that blue energy that is from the aliens. No, any car can fly because they can be taught by aliens how to fly, but also any car can fly like a plane because they can just slap <laughs> wings and a rudder type deal on them. None of neither of them have propellers. No, Mike Mater did have a propeller. Nor jet engines. Right at the like it was on his butt for some reason. Was it okay, I missed that. Which but... I'm guessing is why he was able to be the best backwards flyer. Yeah, you super can't fly a plane backwards. <laughs> That's very much not how planes work. Uh, so, it, which to be fair, they do make him break apart horrifically. <laughs> yep, because he's but flying that was, very quickly in the wrong that direction was because of the speed. Because if if you notice, he does break the sound barrier. Yeah, he does break the sound barrier going backwards while flying, <laughs> which uh, wings aren't designed for that. But <laughs> very much not. Whatever. So yeah, prop wash. We always knew prop wash junction existed in this universe, but that's a very direct tie to our friends over in the planes universe, which is also the cars universe. Cool, fun. I don't know, man. <laughs> we got like two more. All right. So what's what's next? We got the f- film noir, the private. Yeah, Mater Mater Private Eye. Uh Okay. I don't feel like this one has huge implications, besides, you know, the headlight thing. <laughs> so this is a, a one where they make it very clear that tires can be very sexy. They do. They, they start oh, yeah, off the right. film noir with the classic uh, objectification of the woman that walks into his door. Except he says, she had those white-walled tires that really get me going or something like that. And it's just like, okay... So Mater is horny cool. for white-walled tires. Great. Oh, Lightning got white-walled he tires did. at one point. And I'm not going to touch that. Are uh, you trying to say that in any way it wasn't obvious that Mater has been horny for Lightning? He probably has. Good for him. Yeah, this one, one of the, either Mia or Tia has been kidnapped, and the other one comes and gets Mater to find him. It's a film noir story. The one who gets him to help betrays him at the end, and there's a crane person. There's a person who has a crane. There's also, so, like, the whole mob mafia thing, but also, yes. they just they just remove what we have decided is, like, a testicle. They just cut off a testicle. At the very least, we have they cut off one of his two sexual organs, is what we have decided they have yep. done. And... They don't even cut off, they, they pry out. Yep, they just shove something in there and pull it out you don't have to watch it happen but you do see the end result and you do see 
right before then. And that was their way of being like, oh, we're gonna get you to stop chasing this lead. Not to kill him, but to just sexually maim him. Yeah, pretty messed up. Yep. Oh boy. I don't know that I don't know that I have anything more that I want to talk about. That we we have mentioned before. We've noticed Mater only has one headlight. This is, I guess, the backstory for that. Well, we can talk about the fact that I've always confused like Doc Hudson as being also the sheriff, but he's not. And in this one, Lightning McQueen is the lieutenant. Yes, I forgot about that. Lightning is a cop in this he one. He is a cop, but also like. Huh. Boy, howdy. He, how did he forget he was a cop, Lucas? Huh. He forgets he's a cop well, and also that he's somehow, like, 60 or 70 years older than he thought he was. And, and like, a high-ranking cop, not not even, like, a patrol. He's like, I think he, I think you're right, he was the lieutenant or something. Yep. So, yeah, this, this one's a bit harder to make Lightning forget, huh? What, what if, okay, what if this was a movie since it's stylized it's in black and white what if this was a movie they were both in but mater is telling lucas, it if, like it was a real lucas, story if we go down this rabbit hole then they're all they're all just movies yeah which yeah we, we, the we, ufo yeah, one cannot right. be can. just a movie because uh-huh. he can actually fly so i guess i don't know man cops have dangerous jobs <laughs> they do he was shot in his brain. Then it didn't kill him, though. So we're going. Do you have anything better than that? We're going with he was shot in the brain. That can be survivable, very rarely. I mean, yeah. And do you have anything better than that, John? I don't know, man. Was shot in the head. Survived it, man. How does off screen he survive so many terrible things? Also, can we talk about the fact that the villains, when they were gonna, like, actually kill Mater, they were just gonna throw him into the ocean, and that was it. But, like, well, we've already yeah. confirmed that he doesn't need to breathe, so... But when he comes out of the ocean, he does, like, a big... <gasps> as if he was holding his breath the whole time. Oh, man. Which, like, again, they didn't, like, put cinder blocks on him or anything. They didn't take off his tires. They were just gonna drop him into the water... Which he can clearly drive out of. So, like, what's the plan there? Delay him for a bit while they get away, maybe? But then he could just, like, tell the cops. Weren't they, like, leaving on a ship, though, or something? No, they were just at the docks where they were disposing of the tires that were all, like, blowing up because they were knockoffs and also receiving a shipment of the knockoffs. What was the evidence for this one? Do you remember? He what what found, made this one real? He found the, uh, oh, the evidence in that way. It was the conga line at the end from the lady that he met in the nightclub. Okay. Who he bribed That's with... That's not nothing. Okay. He, he bribed with the shoes that make him real randy. He did do that. He did give her... <laughs> oh, man. Mater, you... You're... Yeah, that's not cool. Uh, I don't know, man. This one, Lightning doesn't remember because it was a long time ago. Because <laughs> it was a long time ago in a land far, far away. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. We we gotta talk about Mater the Greater now. See, when you said also can fly like a plane, I thought you were referencing this one. And, okay, so let's just get into it. Mater the Greater is one of the worst named ones, for me at least. Because, like, I don't, I don't like it. He's, he's a daredevil. That's mm-hmm. it. That His whole thing is he's yeah. a daredevil. And he starts off his daredevil career that we see by just walking on people slowly yeah this one is like the mo- i think like the most famous mater tall tale because i always see like his like daredevil paint job uh at- included in like the cars video games i have in etc mm-hmm. but yeah it's just he's a daredevil it's also one of the more forgettable ones for me yeah uh he is a daredevil and then he starts his career off with the big jump where he's going to jump over a bunch of cars. And then he doesn't. He just gets to the end of the ramp and walks on them slowly. Yeah. And I want to point out every single one of those cars was a rusty car. So, like, oh, no, that's not good. <laughs> that Do you think that's how he they're... became rusty? What do you mean exactly? Well, yeah. we talked about it being leprosy. 
And I feel like if you're just like... Oh, yeah. I mean, that's karma right there. That's karma. karma. Yeah. Okay, I, f- I forgot about that we said that. <laughs> yeah, these could be car... Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> so this this one is how he got his rust all over him, maybe. He lost his headlight by thugs. He lost his, like, nose or uh, the hood because of the Mater, Mater door, door incident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He blows it off because it gets dented or something. Yeah, which, like, uh, look at me. I'm going to fight this bull. And what he does is he's got a broken nose, so he rips his nose off and then snorts. I could see it being like how in movies you see sometimes with someone with a broken nose, they, like, reset it which doesn't like actually fit it. They just put it back in place is like, I guess the analog they were going for there. Uh, Like I would think it was like one of those things where they've got a bloody nose. So they just like loogie out the blood that's sticking it. And then that's just like a a really gross. I'm a action hero thing to do. But can you imagine the sheer terror of if you're in a fight with someone and you've broken their nose so what they decide to do is tear off their nose before continuing the fight. Let me tell you, I would not continue the fight. It's effective. They have won that fight. They have won every intimidation role ever. I don't I don't see anything happening after that point. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, Mary Grader, he jumps over a big canyon, uh, but he has like lightning do it first is how lightning comes in and lightning gets like halfway over. Uh, and then it cuts back to like him telling the story and he sort of stopped and lightning's like, well, wh- what, what, what happened? And Mater goes, you didn't make it. And then everyone around him, all the citizens of Radiator Spring sort of go like, Oh, like what a sad story. And they all drive away. Which... Leaving lightning going like, wait, what, what happened to me? Which, which brings me to my point from earlier. I think Mater's Tall Tales are a sequel to all other Cars films. And what this sequel entails is that Lightning is in some sort of purgatory because he has very much died. Yeah? I think Mater... I mean, it could be the crash in Cars 3. I'm not even saying that. I'm saying one of these is real, and it's this one. And And he dies in this one. (laughs) And it's the first one, and he dies. So Lightning is dead. And in purgatory, hearing all of these strange stories as he is fading from our reality. Because he's dead? Because, I'm quoting Mater here, you didn't make it. Yeah, could be Lightning's a ghost the whole time, but that makes about as much sense as your thing. Uh, I was gonna go with, if we're going for like overarching themes, maybe Mater just has reality bending powers. (laughs) These things weren't true until he said them. I mean, I could is what I could I... get behind that. But also, you said ghost, which makes me think, what if, seriously, lightning is a ghost? And the Tokyo one happens after he becomes the ghost? Which is how he gets lightning powers. That could work. It works just... Uh... As well as anything. I like reality bending because no one knows about it before it happens. But everyone is convinced, and then there is evidence only after it has happened. So I don't think it did happen until Mater said, no, this happened. History reformed to make that true, is what I I think Mater is some sort of trickster god. No, I can (laughs) definitely get behind trickster god Mater. Yeah, I think that's, that's all I got for Mater's tall tales. Is that Mater is a reality-bending trickster god. (laughs) Sorry. Very fair. Trickster god Mater. Uh, Who has been sent to torment Lightning McQueen. (laughs) Yes. Oh boy. Now, are there any more that we're going to be talking about? There is one other tall tale, but man, it is so wild that we are giving it its own episode sometime in the future. It is Time Travel Mater... And yeah, he travels through time. We can't, we can't do that in one, folks. With all these other ones, it took us an hour and a half without me editing it to get through all of the, the other six. We can't also talk about the fact that Mater can travel through time. Which brings me to my 
fun fact of the day and sure. my not very fun fact of the day. And it Later is can travel through time. <laughs> it is that okay, so there is a proposal for a time travel machine that a trek around the world that is a vacuum in which you are in a train and you are moving at an extreme speed, getting as close to light speed as possible. And I don't remember what the number was, but there was a speed that they had calculated where if you travel for two weeks inside of this vehicle, you will be traveling 40 years into the future, which is a, a real practical time travel. And the not very fun part is, unfortunately, we do not have a method for traveling backwards in time. We only no, have yeah. forward. <laughs> we only have forward. That's what we've always had. We are we are all time traveling machines at a set speed. It's one second you know? per second. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> think about it. Uh, cool. All right. So that's your little teaser for our time travel episode. I can't talk about Mater any longer. Let's end the podcast. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, remember to email us with any suggestions, any questions, any comments. We've got a Twitter. We do have a website. Yeah, we do. It's uh, thechat.podbeam.com, I think. I'm going to travel to it. Yes, thechat.podbeam.com. Uh, our email is thechat at gmail.com, and that Twitter was at thechat. And thanks for listening. Sorry this one maybe probably went a little long, but we had a lot to talk about, folks. We really did. So until next time, remember to float like a Cadillac. And sting like a beamer. ka Yeah, sure, why not? That'll be the little thing that happens while the music happens. Sure. Tiny.